five minutes. Hello, um, Lisa and Scott Cahill. We were way behind on our videos regarding the failure modes for the Oroville Dam. And I had said originally that there were four failure modes. We've made a video on the principal spillway, which is by far the most likely failure mode. We have made a video on the green spot, which is a, a port which is going around the left groin, we believe, through the indigenous soils. We're pretty sure of that. And we did that out of freak, out of the sequence because so much had been said about that area that we wanted to get uh, our information out there to help people as much as we could. The other two we're going to try and get done today. Uh, the next most serious failure mode that is evolving at the dam is the emergency spillway. The emergency spillway will not be actuated unless the principal spillway fails, which is a somewhat reasonable event. That could happen. Or in a huge storm event. Well, huge. it would be a, a really huge storm event that would overwhelm the full open principal spillway and require actuation of an emergency spillway, but that could happen. Um, some discussion about it's the rainy season's over and therefore there's there's um, no chance of, of it raining. That that's not that's not accurate. Storms happen. They happen at unlikely times. It is it is quite possible the storm that would be required to fail the principal spillway would not be a very large storm in the realm of storms, and it could happen. In any case. The principal spillway is the most serious thing. They're starting to reconstruct it from the bottom up because they just seem to be in another universe for me. Um, but I won't get into that. The emergency spillway. Emergency spillway is a large, massive um, concrete OG weir. It, uh, I guess, is about 30 feet high and probably, I don't know how big it is at the base, and it doesn't matter. It has sufficient mass to offset the rotational and sliding moment from the, from the full pull and the uplift in the event of the, the um, design flood going across it. That's all it has to do. Um, the problem with it, as we found out when it was actuated for the first time during the recent storm, is that the soils behind it are very, very erosive. And since they're erosive and since they're so erosive, the cutback erosion um, in a matter of a very short time, I guess it actuated for about a day. About 18 hours. Um, the cutback was, was going to take the OG weir out. And so they began venting water down the failed principal spillway again, which is very risky, but it was the better of the two bad choices. choices. Exactly. So the emergency spillway now, the, the primary failure mode from it, of course, is cut back from an overtopping. <clears throat> the secondary spill uh, failure mode is from water beneath the structure in a porting um, kind of a thing where foundation pressure beneath the OG weir vents to the outside and carries soils down with it. Um, that will be somewhat abated when they put in this cutoff wall and the RCC that they're going to put behind it. Um, but we have we have some reason to think that there is some porting that goes on beneath that section of the abutting soils, as there is in the left abutment as well. I also have a little bit of a question about the uh, about the construction. It's rated by from the design documents to pass 350,000 CFS, the emergency spillway is. We saw what it looked like at 10,000 CFS. So even with RCC, which is maybe not the very best material for high velocities. Well, it definitely is not the best material for high velocities. I really it's also not the best material for being able to uh, maintain its position because it doesn't have the strength that concrete has to hold 
a rock anchor. So RCC has, has little strength and will erode away under violent water. Um, there are stronger, stronger RCCs and weaker RCCs, but generally, um, you know, and I've questioned the use of RCC a number of times. The money saved seems seems frivolous at this point. When you're when you're flying rocks in by helicopters, really, why do you care? Why just just you pour some care? concrete. Pour some concrete, yeah. right? But <clears throat> anyway, that's my opinion. Well, the reason that's important is because this theoretical storm that's used with dams, the probable maximum flood requires it to pass 350,000 CFS in order for it to be in compliance. And I fail, I just, I, I just flatly think it's a fantasy to imagine that even after the construction, that's going to pass 350,000 CFS. I'll say this about the chances of it passing 300,000 cubic feet per second. That's all I have to say about that. All set? Oh, I couldn't follow that up with anything. <laughs> all right. Thanks a bunch. <laughs>